Hi, welcome. In this video, I'll be doing a budget custom built desktop. Nothing really special. It's not meant for gaming. It's just a simple, basic home residential use, browsing the internet, emailing, things like that, doing Excel spreadsheet and whatnot. All right, so let's jump right into it. I'll be using an Intel i5 processor. I just need one terabyte hard drive, but they do have a sale in a package of two. I get a little bit discounted rate so I just purchase this package I'll be using just one hard drive this is a low profile graphics card meaning that this graphics card does not require any power to power it up it's not meant for gaming it's definitely it's not powerful enough to game anything but it's rather than using the CPU for the display I would prefer to have a dedicated graphics card uh, that way the person can have multiple screen so meaning it can go up to two monitor if you're looking to have two monitors side by side uh, this little low profile GPU allows you to have using a DVI port if you want or the HDMI or using the VGA on the very end so uh, it's an optional if you want to have a stronger graphics card you should have it but again like i said this is a budget built desktop i'll be using a 32 gigabytes ram this is a ddr4 a power supply i believe this is a 500 watt power supply and a motherboard and this motherboard here i'll be using the s rock uh, mini, mini atx motherboard all right so let's jump right into it What I like to do is to preset everything first before I transfer to a desktop case. So in this case, uh, I'll be setting up the motherboard. This is the uh, Intel i5-9500, it's an older CPU. The motherboard only runs on I think the 9th and the 10th generation. So this is uh, on the older side of the CPU uh, because there is an operating system that I would like to, the customer would like to keep with all the program settings and whatnot. So I need to have an older system to clone everything over to the hard drive. Okay. that is plentiful enough and for this one here we are going to position like such because the CPU fan connector is right on this side so we're gonna position like that let's see okay and go ahead and install it You have to press it and then the clipper would go all the way to the very end of it like that on the left side. I'm going to press here on the right. You can see that the uh, uh, the little sharp pointy stuff would push all the way and expand the white connector. So once the white connector is expanded, that means it's locked and going on this one. 
Okay, so for side of the uh, the the clipper is locked. Get the uh, connector connects in. So to install the RAM, making sure that the gap matches the slot. So if you take a look at the slot here, there is a difference. When the RAM goes in, you can see that the gap goes into right at the slot. If you do it the other way around it, what happens is that the slot, the gap, is not matching the slot. Okay, so make sure you match it before you push it in. Once it once it's in, so pretty much we are set. I'm ready to transfer everything over to the desktop. So for the desktop, I will be setting up the the I/O shield on this one, and of course we're gonna install the power supply as well. So let's remove this. I need to clone the hard drive. So for my purpose, I won't be doing the Windows installation here. Uh, but if you are if you are interested to learn how to clone the old hard drive to this new hard drive, uh, check the link down in the description. I'll link it to one of the YouTube that I made. One of the video that I made uh, is using a Cronus on how to clone from one hard drive to the other. So go ahead and check that out. Um, I'm going to save this one for myself later on, but I'm just going to use this later on for the cloning purpose. Okay, now next I'll be transferring over to the desktop case, but before I do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, power supply. This is a non-modular power supply, meaning that all the cables comes into one bundle like that. It is a non-modular. Okay, so I have everything here on the side, ready to be installed. So let me get the computer desktop case. Once I have the desktop case here, then I'll we'll take a look at the, uh, the rest of other stuff. So I'll be using uh, this is a Corsair desktop case. Remove the uh, the panel, the glass panel, and I'll be removing the side panel here. Once I have removed both sides of the panel, first we need to remove this slot, and this is where all the stuff is needed to mount your motherboard and whatnot. So let's go ahead and install the power supply. The power supply goes into the very end of the very bottom of the computer here. So there is the slot for the power supply. And let me find the screws for that. You should have four screws. I wonder what is this coming from the power supply, is it a tester? What does it test for?
Oh, it's just a jumper cable right here to jump open up the power supply, making sure that the power supply works. So I guess the tester is just for you to insert into the connector like such. And then when you press the power, it should power up the uh, uh, the power supply as a tester. That this two cable right there is a jumper. Okay, that is the screws I'm looking for. We have four screws here. Get a Phillips screwdriver. room and install the power supply Okay, once the power supply is installed, you can work on the cable in a second. All this cable management will come later at the end of it. So the next part is to transfer the motherboard over. So let's transfer the motherboard, making sure all the cables are not in a way, so push it on the side here. Open up the shield. So you want to pay a close attention to this. Sometimes you might have to push this in, making sure it's in a position. So making sure that the um, this thing are kind of folded back in a little bit because when you push through sometimes it get caught and you'll be end up like that which the HDMI would, would not be able to get in there so you want to make sure that it is open there's no obstacle blocking it and then go ahead and install at this time you're going to transfer the motherboard Continue, we're going to put in the screws. So this is the micro ATX, there are not much screws to put in, so there are three of them.
point. That's pretty much it for this one. I'm going to have the 24 pin connector that goes on the dead side of it. And then the CPU is going to go up and down. I don't need the rest of it. And the rest of it can go the bottom here. For the front panel switches, the USB and the audio. So that should be it. Flip it back around. Install that 24 pin connector. That is the CPU. That is the audio. It doesn't label, I don't see the label. So I saw the reset, the reset seems to be here. I hope this is the power switch. And that should be the power LED light. Otherwise we can always change and correct them. Okay, that is the USB 3.0. We don't need to have that. And of course we are short of the uh, one of the power on the fan. And this I'll probably get an adapter for that. So we're gonna leave it here on the side. Just gonna jump right into the graphics card. So remove that back cover. Grab the graphics card, put it back in. That should be it. So what I'm going to do next is probably um, to clone the hard drive from the old computer to the new one. That should be the audio. That is the power. Weird. I need to read and find out where exactly that goes for the audio. Seems like it's not happening here. I need to find that out. So I'm going to put it on the side. So I'm going to do the rest of it. And uh, this is pretty much it. I uh, This is a budget build. And just for regular use. Nothing special. And hopefully uh, something that I was able to show and help you guys. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye now.